Tuscany is a place that needs no introduction. One of the world's most popular tourist destinations, it attracts people by the masses, all drawn to its vineyards, its vistas, and its beautiful historical cities. It's the birthplace of the Renaissance, home of Michelangelo, and home to some of the most internationally recognized heritage sites. But there's more to Tuscany than just that. Now its assets in art and culture have been heralded for centuries, and its appeal to tourists is obvious. But what about its appeal for business? And what about its assets in science, research, and technology? These are less well known, but nonetheless worth exploring. And that's what's brought us here to Tuscany. Beginning here in the region's capital city of Florence, we'll be going beyond the well-trodden tourist trail into its academic institutions, its R&D centers, and its multinational companies. We'll be finding out how the region is hoping to leverage its history of scientific achievement to become a research hub for tomorrow. Join us as we go on location. Located midway between Rome and Milan, in the midst of one of the wealthiest regions in Europe, Tuscany has a regional GDP of more than 100 billion euros. Tourism certainly provides its fair share of revenues and remains important. But the economy of the region is more varied and more modern than many people realize. Traditional industries that helped make Tuscany synonymous with fine craftsmanship, like stoneworks, goldsmithing, and textiles, are making way for high-tech sectors such as life sciences, ICT, renewable energy, and robotics. And a region that gave the world some of its most famous early scientists and inventors, including Galileo and Leonardo da Vinci, is now developing cutting-edge technologies in the fields of photonics, home automation, and nanotechnology. It's an innovating region, you know, uh, starting from the Renaissance period <laughs> until the bionic hand uh, um, uh, that was made by one of the professors here in, in, in Tuscany. We have a long tradition in that. And uh, um, so for what concerns innovation and, uh, and research, um, let's say that the cap capability of our research centers is quite well known. The message we would like to um, stress is that we are a creative region, but also with a long tradition, and uh, we are also a stable region. And that's very important now, particularly in Italy. There was a time when foreign investment was viewed with suspicion by the local population and by the government. But under the presidency of Enrico Rossi, the region's leader since 2010, FDI has been given high priority and business procedures have been streamlined. E stiamo lavorando per mettere a disposizione del sistema di imprese una regione accogliente, una regione che in un paese che è difficile come il nostro dal punto di vista delle procedure, dal punto di vista anche della burocrazia, cerca di accompagnare le imprese che vogliono insediarsi sul territorio nei meandri della burocrazia, facilitare molto la loro attività. Ovviamente eh, l'iniziativa che come regione stiamo portando avanti cerca da un lato di rafforzare questi punti di qualità e di innovazione che sono presenti sul territorio, dall'altro lato di rafforzare il sistema delle imprese attraverso anche eh, favorire interventi per l'aggregazione e poi soprattutto di attrarre nuovi investimenti sul nostro territorio oltre che accompagnare le nostre imprese all'estero. Some 500 multinational companies call Tuscany home. One of the largest and most high-profile investors in the region is General Electric, which employs some 4,700 people in Tuscany. So at this site, we're the headquarters of the turbo machinery solutions business, which is one of the seven businesses within oil and gas. And we're really the center of excellence for turbo compression uh, equipment. So really high technology, advanced uh, manufacturing that supports uh, a lot of the oil and gas uh, industry and we support about $6 billion of revenue from this site directly. I think you know, one of the benefits we've seen of being in Tuscany is having great access to some of the great universities uh, in Italy, so whether that's uh, Florence, 
uh, Pisa or Siena. So really for us, it's one of the big advantages of being able to recruit really great uh, talent uh, across the Italian system and base them here in Florence. When Japanese diesel engine maker Yanmar was on the hunt for its first ever research center in Europe, it came upon an unconventional site, a hilltop villa overlooking Florence. Yanmar R&D Europe was established here in 2011. And uh, taking uh, almost one year, we investigate which country is the best place for uh, R&D. We decided to, yes, choose here, Italy. The business case for putting the R&D center in this particular place clearly stacks up. But the nice scenery is an undeniable bonus. I believe that this beautiful site, you know, yes, uh, contribute to us thinking of really or sometimes relaxing. Homegrown multinationals are also maximizing the benefits of doing R&D in Tuscany, which in turn is helping them grow their global businesses. Fabio Perini, a world leader in machines for tissue production, is among them. The company has long roots in the region and has kept its base and its research core in the Tuscan city of Lucca as it has expanded its international footprint. The company was founded in 1966 here in Lucca, in the very same place where we are today, and actually developed itself in the 70s, 80s and 90s by opening new premises in first was Brazil, then was China, and then United States and Wisconsin. Uh, we serve, I would say, uh, the five continents without any distinction. Let's say 100% of the R&D is actually developed here in Luca. The Tuscan city of Pisa is well known internationally. The immediate association is with its iconic tower. But in Italy, the city is known for being home to one of the country's best universities, the University of Pisa. The university's strengths in research and its collaborations with industry are a key part of Tuscany's R&D offer. I think that uh, one key idea is that Tuscany is actually a triangle uh, of um, centers, of research centers, which are located in Florence, Pisa, and Siena, which are only 100 kilometers far apart from each other about. And so there is a high density of research people that have high standards, excellence wor worldwide. The University of Pisa is in fact a main player in Tuscany's thriving ICT scene and along with counterparts in Florence and Siena, conducts highly advanced research in the sector. In the region as a whole, 12,000 people are employed by ICT-focused R&D units. Collaboration between academia and the private sector in this area has international reach. Uh, currently, most of our collaborations are outside Italy with the top players like uh, Acer, Intel, uh, AMD. And also we have the, the top most players in the ICT realm, like Google, Yahoo, Microsoft. We are continuously supporting our research in, in PISA. And we go also to industries that use ICT, like, for example, producers or, producers or cars, like BMW, Mercedes, uh, and also producers of batteries uh, or any other, uh, Celex Galileo, so spacecrafts uh, and uh, all, all things that are around uh, ICT. So it's, it's incredible, but most of our research goes outside Italy. Tuscany also has a strong heritage in the life sciences, with 200 companies active in the region in this sector. Pharmaceuticals giant Novartis is among the companies with an R&D presence in Tuscany, with its Vaccines Institute located in Siena. And literally next door is Tuscana Life Sciences, a scientific incubator jointly supported by governmental, academic, and commercial entities. Its mission is supporting research activities in life science. There are many reasons to locate uh, your uh, business uh, activities in life science in Tuscany. First of all, the strong network of research. We have uh, three universities, two superior schools of, of excellence uh, uh, in the research activities. We host uh, 15 uh, institutes of the biggest uh, um, public uh, research institute, which is CNR, Council for National uh, Research. And uh, on top of this, we have a, a strong network of small, medium enterprises and big players, differently from other regions. We, have, we are following this model of the uh, Pôle de Competitivité uh, in France, and so uh, using the same model, so using some public money to be available to support companies with services, high specialized services to uh, help them in the competition. 
Research centers such as ITT, the Tumor Institute of Tuscany, and the Endocast Center for Computer-Assisted Surgery are giving Tuscany a name in biomedical research, while the Qubit Lab for Telecoms Technology and the Epiagio Center for Automation, Robotics, and Bioengineering are breaking ground in their respective fields. All are helping take Tuscany, one of the world's great historical regions, into the future. It's very easy to be dazzled by Tuscany. It's a place that doesn't even have to try hard to impress. But its beauty is both a blessing and a curse for its FDI promotion efforts. The region enjoys a positive brand image and strong name recognition all around the world, thanks to its cultural offerings and its physical beauty. But that also makes it difficult to get people to look below the surface and to consider Tuscany as a place for business, not just a holiday. Now, as we've seen, there are multinational companies that have discovered some of these hidden assets of Tuscany. And behind the beautiful facades of its cities, there are clusters of hard science, research, and technology. We've given you just a glimpse of what's here in terms of research and R&D, but I hope you've enjoyed this brief look at the business side of a tourist treasure. Join us next time to see where we go on location.